Welcome everyone. Hello. <laughs> yes, these new microphones are definitely staying in my videos because I love the experience of talking in them. It looks like I'm talking in the little man. Anyway, hi friends. Hello. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. I'm Ali. You know that. I know that. I hope I know that. Let's just get into into this video because I don't really know how to talk about it as of right now. I don't know how to articulate what I'm trying to make this video project be. So, hi, as you all know, I am Ali and I'm turning 30 this year. I know I can't believe it myself. And there are a few book series and just like books overall that I never read when I was a child or a teenager that I feel like quintessential to a lot of people's like growing up and a lot of people look back on or even like still reread to this day because they have such a love for these books and I was thinking I want that <laughs> I want that so if you follow Kayla from Books and Lala she does this series where she reads books from her like from different like periods of her life like essentially reading through when she was a kid to a teenager, reading her favorite books of those years. This is kind of the opposite of that, in the sense that I'm kind of subverting it. So I've never read these books, but they are a lot of books or series that people consider, you know, their favorite books from their childhood or you know, the reason why they went into reading and so I wanted to read them in my 30th year. So I have a few book series that I'm thinking about doing and what I'll do is I'll actually tell you my thoughts and my ideas and then you let me know if there are books and or book series that you think I should add to this kind of project. So I'm thinking of Percy Jackson and most likely the entire like Rick Riordan universe. Um, I've only ever read The Lightning Thief, and I read that a few years ago, and I really loved it. Thinking of that one, I'm thinking Earthsea by Ursula K. Le Guin. I'm thinking The Hunger Games, if it's worth it, Divergent. Oh, I don't know what that book is called, that book series, <laughs> but it's by Cornelia Funk. I'm thinking Howl's Moving Castle, His Dark Materials, like those types of books. And I feel like there's a few middle grade series that I'm not thinking about that would be on this list but I want to read them because I never read them when I was a kid or a teenager and I want to read them now okay so I've actually decided that my first kind of series that we're doing for this video project is His Dark Materials by Philip Pullman now I made this decision because I had this on my shelf I actually got this last year with the idea of like reading it and then the idea of this of this like video series or project or thing that I want to do with no real pressure I just want to do it that's when this came to me and I was like hang on this would be a f perfect first trilogy to read for this for this project so we're gonna read His Dark Materials by Philip Pullman for the first time ever as a 30 year old Oh, as a near. So His Dark Materials is a trilogy that includes Northern Lights, The Subtle Knife and The Amber Spyglass. That's what we're doing. Now, I don't know much about this series. All I know is that it takes place in like an alternate universe, but also it takes place in multiple universes and it's a reimagining of John Milton's Paradise Lost. Now, if you know anything about me, you know that I love Paradise Lost by John Milton. It's one of my favorite, is it my favorite epic poem? Oh, it might be, or it might be Prometheus Unbound. It's like my top one or two epic poems. So it's a reimagining of Paradise Lost by John Milton. And it's about a young girl named Lyra who lives in a parallel universe in which magic, science, and theology are tightly intertwined. And she grows up in kind of Oxford University, but she doesn't have any parents. She just has an uncle. But then something starts happening with the children in this universe and then it hits close to home 
and she decides that she needs to try and find out what the actual fuck is happening. Um, I'm guessing a lot more shit happens. I'm guessing a lot more shit happens and I feel like there's going to be like this grand conspiracy or something's going on. And then in the subtle knife, all I know is that she meets someone named Will. And this is in another universe. So that's all I really want to know because I want this experience to be as like, I don't want to be spoiled. I don't think this is going to be a spoiler filled vlog. I'm going to try and make it as spoiler free as possible just for the off chance that there is someone like me who has gone most of their life without reading these books. So we are reading His Dark Materials by Philip Pullman and I'm so excited. I'm so excited to read this. I am really looking for comfort and coziness and just that that warmth that I talk about. I'm going to stop talking now and I'm going to give it to future me who's like read a book or a few pages to give her update. Let's do an update. My voice is slightly better, which is great. But anyway, let's do an update. I actually finished Northern Lights by Philip Pullman. I know that I can hang this, like I can clip this to my ship, but I really like holding it. It's just so much more fun. Anyway, I finished Northern Lights. I loved it. I absolutely loved it it was so good i gave it like four and a half stars like it's not a favorite of all time but it was such a good time so i didn't really know what this was about to be perfectly honest like i had vague ideas that it's based in like an alternate universe it's about lyra she's like an orphan at oxford but i didn't quite get the story and the blurb is is vague and it's meant to be vague I think but oh my god I didn't expect anything that happened in this like I couldn't predict it and I felt like there was always something happening like there were so many twists and things I didn't predict and it was such a fun reading experience. If I read this when I was a teenager or even just like younger, you know, eight or nine, oh my God. Because I love Lyra. I love Lyra. She's such an interesting character. And she's just like, where has, where are the Lyras of young adult fiction? You know what I mean? She is such a strong character, but she also like makes mistakes. And she doesn't, like, she's not afraid to be afraid, but she, like, her courage comes from the fact that she is afraid and she still gets shit done. I just think she is such a fantastic character and I really loved her. And the bear, he, he, I can't say his name. I always, it, Eorek, Eor, Eorek, Eorek Bjor, Brinson, Eorek, is that how you pronounce his name? I loved him what a great character and that entire like storyline about him and she just collects people because she is such a wonderful soul and then everything about um uncle ansel is, is his name ansel and like mrs C miss coulter like i didn't i didn't see that coming i kind of anticipated that the uncle was not just an uncle but I wasn't anticipating that Miss Coulter is, you know, I'm trying to keep this as spoiler free as possible. This is going to be a spoiler free reading vlog, but I didn't, I just didn't expect it. And I should have, but I didn't. And the spirit, like the demons that are the, you know, connected to an individual soul is really interesting. It's just a really fascinating, unique fantasy world. And 
now that I've finished Northern Lights, I cannot wait to see what the sequel is about, which is The Subtle Knife. And it's about another universe because the end of Northern Lights, she's doing something. I just think that the exploration of morality, as well as the just emphasis on church control and authority, oh my god, like you you obviously don't see it much because Lyra is a child but you kind of glean from what the adults are saying around her that they can't necessarily do much like their hands are tied in like in regards to research and what they're allowed to research because of the church which is really fascinating really really fascinating the Egyptian people they're also really cool and for some reason they give me Aiel vibes Aielman vibes from the Wheel of Time maybe it's because they have like a like they're kind of not nomadic but they they're travelers um but they're also they're like they're secretive and they lie they lay outside the power and control of the rest of the world they're their own people I just really liked them and I liked that how Lyra's story and the story of the Egyptians intertwined again I did not expect that I just it was just a really freaking good book okay it was a really good book and I'm really excited to read the sequel The Subtle Knife because I'm excited to be introduced to Will I'm excited to see what happens with Lyra and everything else I just really loved it I really loved it and maybe it was because I read did I read yeah I read this when I was stuck in bed like with COVID but it gave me that that sense of of being comforted it was really really nice and I kept on thinking oh god I wish I, I read this when I was younger like I would have truly connected with Lyra I still I still do now like even though I'm (laughs) nearly 30 but I just I think I would have I don't know felt more at home this story when I was younger and I think it would have would have helped me in some way the way that books do you know when you find a really good book and you just you turn to it over and over again I feel like younger me would have really loved that but yeah I just I'm so happy that I read it so I am I'm so excited to read The Subtle Knife. The Subtle Knife though in my edition right is so tiny in comparison to the Amber Spyglass so where where is it I can't really do this one-handed so we start The Subtle Knife here right that's The Subtle Knife also, my edition, I love this edition. It's um, from Every Man's Library edition. Love it. So that's the start of The Subtle Knife. And then the end, it's only that much. How tiny is that for a sequel? I thought that was insanely small. Anyway, I'm having the time of my life. So my plan is to read The Subtle Knife. And then I think what I might do, because I read Northern Lights and then I started another book. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to read The Subtle Knife and then binge read the last book as well. So read it back to back. I think I might do that because waiting to read the sequel, oh, I just want to read it. I just want to see what happens. I'm so intrigued. And I want to know more about what is this dust they keep on talking about and what it means. Like, is it actually something about sin, the way the church has been perpetuating it as? Or is it something actually magical? Or is it just something about the universe? Like, is it just, I don't know. I'm so intrigued. It's so, oh, it's so, if you haven't read this, read it. Read it. It is so good. It is so good. It is so, so good. Okay, I'm going to now finish my other book and then get to reading The Subtle Knife. Hello, hello, hello. So, I look like a ghost. Oh my god. Am I that pale? Lord in heaven, Casper the Friendly Who? Anyway, 
I'm stealing his brand. <laughs> I finished the subtle knife last night. Now I was meaning to make a like update before I finished it, but I literally finished it within a couple hours last night in bed. Like I started it, finished it. It was absolutely incredible. Let me just move you. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I'm I keep on forgetting that I want to keep this this like reading vlog spoiler free. Okay, so The Subtle Knife takes place immediately after Northern Lights, right? But like at least we'll say a week, a few days to a week. And we we first meet, like the book opens up with meeting Will. And you know how in the introduction of this vlog, I, I read out the blurb. It's a bloody spoiler. Will doesn't get the knife until like halfway through. He, he's not like I thought because he kept on talking about like his leather writing case of his dad's that his mum kept that people are after. And I thought maybe the knife was in there, but it's literally just letters. So he he goes on a journey and gets this knife. Like that's a spoiler. I got so annoyed. I was like, oh, that's why you don't sometimes you don't fucking read blurbs because they oh, oh. anyway. But oh, my God. So Will is a precious, precious boy. He's a few years older than Lyra and he loves his mum so much. He loves his mum so, so much and it's heartbreaking. Oh my God, he's so, he's so precious. I just want to protect him. Um, he meets Lyra in a different world. <laughs> like just the things that happen that make... Will and Lyra meet in an alternate universe. Like, it's not Will's, it's not Lyra's. It's like this in-between gateway world. So wonderful and so weird. I love it so much. But Will and Lyra don't immediately become friends. They're a bit hesitant to trust each other. But then Lyra asks her atheometer, the compass thing, whether she should trust Will. And the compass is like, he's a murderer. So she's like, oh yeah, true. I can trust him. <laughs> I just loved, I loved that scene. It was really funny. But I think the subtle knife was incredible. It was incredible. So much world building. You find out that in most universes, they are attempting to figure out what this dust is. And in various Universes, they have different names for it. So like in Will's world, it's connected to dark matter and they call it shadow particles. And then in Lyra's world, it's dust because in Lyra's world, it's a it's like not as technologically advanced as Will's. And then you go to this gateway world and they've been like jumping to alternate universes and like creating knives out of the dust shit. Like it, it, it's just like there's angels that are made out of dust, like it's just so fascinating. It's so fascinating. And in The Subtle Knife, we get introduced to these figures called angels. It's so good. It's so fucking good. I gave The Subtle Knife, The Subtle Knife, five fucking stars. It was brilliant. have come with an update I finished the amber spyglass I finished it I finished it last night I was so adamant to actually make sure that I finished this book yesterday because it was just it was taking me too long anyway it was the first book that I finished in 2024 which I think is really good I love this trilogy I really do however <laughs> the amber spyglass I kind of felt 
bit a little bit unsatisfied I don't know how to really I don't really know how to work through my feelings to be perfectly honest with you all I actually let me have a look because I wrote a little entry in my journal so this is what I'm using as my reading journal as well it's my Hobonichi weeks that I'm using as like my planner for this year but I'm also using it as my reading journal I might do a video about my journaling like situation for 2024 um that could be a future video I wrote an entry for the amber spyglass and basically basically I really loved it I did I gave it four stars but from like you go from northern lights to the subtle knife it's you're climbing and the amber spyglass was so different so first and foremost the pacing I felt was slightly all over the place and a lot of things do happen but it's so long it feels so long that you get bored easily and I didn't find that with Northern Lights and the Subtle Knife I found the pacing to be exquisite right I found it to be magnificent it was so well written and so well done but with the amber spyglass it was things would happen and then it would pull back and then things would happen and then it would pull back and it, it was giving me whiplash I, I yeah I just think it was maybe the length it was a bit too long I think considering like the story and as another thing the you're building up to the climax right the battle so to speak and the eventual like temptation between Will and well the temptation that Lyra is supposed to have um, which results in like the fall of man or whatever and so you're building to these events the battle between like the authority like and Metatron and the angels against like Azriel like and like the rebellion essentially happened so quickly but in a way it was kind of I guess it's supposed to be poetic that God the figure of God was essentially a prisoner and Lyra and um, Will accidentally free him from his like glass cage and he dissolves like he dies and so they destroy him but they don't know who he was and Metatron you're telling me a, a millennia old entity angel honestly archangel whatever who is incredibly smart incredibly intelligent is so obsessed with Mrs Coulter and her flesh because angels you know angels are uh, obsessed with flesh because they don't have any they don't have a body that he just like follows along with her like a sheep and maybe that's the imagery that we were supposed to get it is quite biblical in that way I guess and then you know I don't want to go into too spoilery but Metatron is killed and the way he's killed I don't I feel like I've seen on Goodreads that it's meant to be like this redeeming arc for Asriel, for Lyra's dad and mum, Mrs. Coulter and Asriel. I didn't see it that way. I saw it as they. it was one act that was technically good, but they were not themselves technically good people. I didn't find that their story arc was redeeming in any shape whatsoever because They've done, well, especially with Mrs. Coulter, done absolutely atrocious things to to human beings and to other beings in the name of power. And no, like Mrs. Coulter's love for Lyra was very abusive and very cruel. And you could also argue that the same was for Lord Asriel. Uh, so I didn't care about that. I was like, good riddance, whatever. So the entire battle thing happens so, so quickly. And Will and Lyra... 
they're just they're just you know trying to find their demons and they're just there like nothing really happens and then they fall asleep in the middle of the woods supposedly where the war was happening and then they find Mary Malone who is supposed to act as the temptress she is supposed to be the servant the servant the serpent and the like temptation wasn't necessarily like temptation obviously but it like the serpent with the apple Mary Malone with the strawberry <laughs> or was it a strawberry or marzipone 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 what is that called is it a cheese or like a a, a dessert marzipone anyway uh that and the knowledge that she gave or that she provided unknowingly maybe to Lyra and Will was that of love and in brackets maybe desire but I don't want to think about that because they're children <laughs> and I saw I saw another I can't help it I saw another Goodreads review saying that the the universes were saved by Lyra and Will boinking no 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 no, no. First of all, they're literally children. Lyra is 12. Will is a couple years older than her. Absolutely not. They did not boink. They kissed and shared whatever they shared. I don't really want to talk about it because it makes me uncomfortable because they're children. But I think the, like, the fall and the thing that changes the universe is their love for one another. I don't quite understand that that entire aspect of the book or like they tell each other they love each other they realize what they feel is love like this big huge thing that they're feeling and maybe it's also them with that knowledge their innocence is shattered I don't know but everything's all right in all the universes and I was like hmm And I kind of just, that unsatisfied me. That left me unsatisfied. You had such an incredible trilogy and then that's how you, that's how it ends. And I understand like the actual ending. It's not a happy ever after. It's very open-ended because they're children, right? And they have to go. It was very like neatly bow, like neatly tied bow. Like, oh, you can't stay in, in... the other universes and also like using the knife to like go into other universes is what causes the spectres and then the spectres eat like feed off the dust and demons and then the dust go like starts leaking through all these uh holes in the universes that you make with the knife and that's why the all these worlds are going to shit so you have to close all the windows then go into your separate universes and that's final it just felt a bit lazy at the end and that was that was really annoying to me just a little bit because it was so fascinating and also we needed more of Mary Malone's story like her with the Mulefa so cool I just I just wanted like a bit more the Mulefa are creatures they're intelligent sentient creatures that are kind of horse-like but they ride on wheels these particular like seeds that they use as wheels. It's just a fascinating, it's just fascinating, like all these worlds, all these creatures and the ending just wasn't what it should have been and it's, it was really sad. Like I finished it and I was like, oh, I don't know. But I'm so happy that I read this. I feel like you read this trilogy for the unique and fascinating world and story I just it's so it's so good commentary on religion commentary on human humanness our purpose why we're here it was just wonderfully done uh the subtle knife is my favorite in the in the trilogy it was just mind-blowing for me Lyra's character herself let's talk about Lyra for a little bit because I haven't really spoken about Lyra. Lyra for me is quite complex. 
And I know I always say that characters are interesting, but she's really interesting. You know why she's interesting? Because, like, there are aspects of her character that are kind of unlikable. She's a brat. There are, like, she is a brat and sometimes she does things in order to manipulate. And we as the readers are fully cognizant of that because she is very honest in her, like, internal monologue. So we see we see that. There's no, like, hiding. Like, we're not supposed to not know these aspects of her, like, these character flaws. We're very much aware of them. I just thought it was interesting, especially considering that she's meant to act as the Eve character. And I feel like at times, even though I interpret this book as, you know, a a critique and commentary on the authority of the church, Philip Pullman, in his characterization of Lyra and therefore of Will, kind of doubles down on the stereotype of like, you know, this Eve figure and Lyra is, you know, manipulative uh, is a liar, is a deceiver, out for her own gain, kind of willful and stubborn, but can also act quite naive and innocent. She's a child. She's a child who likes to storytell, but she also understands how people can react to her. She can mould herself a little bit to what people want of her. And I feel like Philip Pullman, and it was especially apparent in The Amber Spyglass, which maybe was the point because she was supposed to act as this Eve figure. It's like the stereotype of like women being the reason for the fall of man and, you know, the defected seductress sort of situation, inferior to man. And you could argue that Lyra very quickly goes from someone who kind of is very headstrong and makes her own way and is very adamant that she does it does everything her way to following will around and depending on him and his strength and his protection but I didn't necessarily perceive their relationship like that I just I just saw Lyra and her characterization in the amber spyglass as more like leaning into the stereotype of of an Eve, uh, then obviously Will is Adam. <laughs> and I, Will is precious, really, really love him. Um, the contrast between him and Lyra is not as black and white as you think, but he still is like quite a truthful, honest, fierce protector. He is, he, he acts like a soldier really. And he's, he's very young and so your your heart is easily goes out to him, right? Lyra, it's a bit different. So I, I don't know. I thought the stereotyping was a bit something that I wanted to say, something that I wanted to, something that I wanted to talk about. And I also wanted to say, in regards to Lyra, that regardless, she is a child who has never been loved, not truly. And so her character flaws, you could argue, are a result of her wanting to belong so, so fiercely to somewhere, to someone, to people. Like, you know, she wants to she wants to feel love and be loved and also to love. Like, she wants to love. And she w- just made me sad. But I really liked at the end that, I don't know if every edition of His Dark Materials have these, but at the end of each book... There was like this section called Lantern Slides, which are just fragments of the story that never actually made it in to the final cut. And um, the last Lantern Slide, last fragment that we get for the Amber Spyglass is about Lyra and she's 18 and she's studying uh, to try and figure out how to properly read the Atheomedia, Atheomedia the atheometer and she's in the library and she's surrounded by books with her demon pen and it was just really precious it was really adorable I wish we got something about Will like that but we do find out that Will is studying to be like a doctor and I think that was just really really precious I would love to see I don't know I haven't looked online because I didn't want to (laughs) just in case but I would love if Philip Pullman was to write just one more. It doesn't have to be a full-length novel. It could just be a novella about Will and Lyra. You know, 
in their late 20s doing their life and maybe having, you know, not a happy ever after, but just seeing where they're at, you know. Maybe they each find a different love. Maybe they each make their own families or maybe when they're in their old age, they meet at the land of the dead. Um, I just, I would like to see them again. I think Lyra and Will will always remain with me. And I'm very happy that I read this trilogy because it's made me really excited for the next series that I decide or the next book that I decide to read for this kind of random project that I want to do. Reading books that I didn't read as a teenager slash child. So that is the end of this reading vlog. And I can't, I can't believe it. I feel sad. I feel sad. But that is the end of reading His Dark Materials by Philip Pullman. I hope you enjoyed. So to recap, I gave Northern Lights four and a half stars, The Subtle Knife five stars, and The Amber Spyglass four stars. So I'm considering it a win. It's a win. This was fantastic. I don't know where to go from here. I don't know. I've got to figure out figure out what book or what series that I want to like read next. I'm leaning towards maybe Earthsea because I have the first four on my bookshelf in like a in one volume. So I could start there. But if you have any options, if you have any ideas, let me know. And that is the end. Actually, the end. I'm going to stop talking now. As always, take care and stay safe. Happy reading. And I'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye, friends. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba.